Gotta take the time to cut them off, I need her I know how to make the girl go crazy When you treat her like you're number one, baby What is the deal, beautiful people? It's your boy Ramon, Lifestyles Defined my favorite topic in the world street photography one of the homies hit me on instagram and just asked for a few tips and uh, if you go to the channel and search for street photography you're gonna find a lot of prior videos even on our main tech channel before we spun off and gave photography its own place i would always talk about street photography now, street photography to me is the most difficult genre in, in photography because of the nature things are always changing unpredictability uh you, you know you can't account for everything and you're really just at the mercy and you have to sharpen your skills to react in the in the moment that decisive moment <laughs> so this is why i love it so and the tips that I, I continue to give people continue to evolve it's not always easy and there's no you know there's no god setting that you can put in your camera to get better street photography uh it, it just continues to be a grind you know it continues to be a, a a building block a foundation that you build on as as you get out there and you feel more comfortable so uh here goes a few tips for the homie first you you really need to to hit the streets with a purpose uh, this, I would say the first year I really started taking street photography, uh, serious, this was what I, I, I sort of realized. And, and after I understood this, my work got so much better because I would just, I would just grab the camera and, and I would just leave work and I would just walk for like an hour and I, I just shoot everything and it, it worked and it helped because it, it got me out and shooting. It got me familiar with my camera. And it also got me to be, uh, to open up in these environments and, and, and feel less insecure that someone's looking at me taking a picture or someone's gonna come over. Hey, what the, what the hell are you doing? Delete that, delete. Like, it, it got rid of all of those phobias. But as I sat back and I paid attention to my work and I was, why is my work not progressing? I realized I, I wasn't really going out with a purpose. So you, you need to come up with a purpose or concept before you grab that camera and hit the street. And I'm like, it doesn't have to be anything crazy abstract like trying to catch a baby falling from a two-story window. I mean, pick a color, uh, pick an object, pick a shape. Uh, you know, uh, pick a uh, something with depth of feel, pick angles, subframing, like something, just pick something and, and gun for that. And I, I think it, it's going to help you focus. It's going to help you pay attention to your composition. And in the long run, uh, it's going to it's going to keep you on a track and, and it's going to add to a goal that you should have in mind. Uh, what I also find helpful is that you create uh, a project. So for instance, one of my current projects, I need to actually shoot the video on this. One of my current projects is uh, an iPhone 5 challenge. And I say iPhone 5 because it's probably the oldest phone that I have laying around. And I just grab it and I go out and I do street photography with an iPhone 5. In, in 2017, it may sound crazy, but the images that I got are still super dope. You know, in fact, I've been cheating a little bit because I, I'm not quite happy with the colors. And part of the commitment to this challenge is I need to edit on an iPhone 5. So I'm really proving to myself that I understand composition. I understand street photography. I understand settings. I understand the camera that I'm shooting with and the limitations that I have because of the camera that I'm shooting with. So that that's something that I, I've been doing. I've been making the images black and white. And I've been very happy with the results. Uh, I'm going to make a video and splice that in. And, and I want to welcome you guys into that challenge as well. Uh, I think it's a worthwhile exercise. And, and it just sort of pulls you out of that mindset that it's all about the gear. It really isn't all about the gear. A decision on the focal length you want to use. This was a big struggle for me uh, for about the, the first year, first year and a half. I was so confused. I would do so much reading. And you know, you, you Google these things, best focal length for street photography. And uh, some people go, oh, it's gotta be a 50 mil because that's the equivalent to what the human eye sees. Oh, it's gotta be a 35 millimeter because it's close to a 50, but you still, uh, it's, it's not wide. It doesn't distort things. And some people say, oh, it's gotta be a wide angle lens uh, because 
it forces you to get close to your subject and if your picture's not good enough then you're not close enough and and they you know they all have points but they all come from people who had their developed styles and agendas and, and whatnot pick what's best for you the way i did it is i sort of gauge my comfort uh, and to this day, this is why, uh, oddly enough, I don't have a specific focal length for street photography. Some days I'm feeling crappy. I don't want to be bothered. And you still want to engage in photography because it's a very relaxing hobby for me. I'll grab, uh, I'll grab a long lens. And that allows me to, to really disconnect and stay away from people and, and not disturb them in their you know whatever the hell it is they're doing and of course you know that comes with it's it's some big pluses you get ridiculous uh depth of field images you you get the ability to isolate subjects and really tight composures and super dope some days when i'm when i'm in my element and i'm feeling like you know what today i'm gonna be a boss photographer i'll grab a wide angle and i'll get up in everyone's face with assertiveness and i'll get that shot and i'll smile and they'll smile and i'll feel good and we go home and it, it's it's think about what you feel comfortable doing and then you find a lens sometimes i shoot a 50. um you know at first i didn't like 50s and jerry scolded me on the phone one day man you out of your goddamn mind there's nothing wrong with a 50 and, and then i stuck with it and i learned and i i quite like a 50 in fact when i reviewed the canon uh 5d mark 4 i opted for the 50 1.2 and I, it was very comfortable shooting with that when i reviewed the fuji i opted for the 35 millimeter equivalent and i was very comfortable with that you know it's it's about your comfort level don't let anyone tell you that you need to get a wide angle lens when you know that you're scared to shit of, of someone uh, confronting you about a picture you just took. Don't let anyone tell you to get a, a long lens when you know part of the passion and the photography for you is being able to connect with people. You don't want a long lens because you won't be close to connect. Patience. Patience is one of those things where you could nail it up on a fridge, you can nail it up on a wall, put it in your lunchbox, stick it to your back pocket. You hear it everywhere, everything, every discipline in life, patience, and we still have none. <laughs> in street photography, patience pays off. It really does. But you need to have a foresight. For instance, uh, some days I'll go out and I'll look for a specific corner, a specific light setting, uh, a specific reflection and I'll just wait I'll just wait 10 15 20 minutes I'll just wait cameras on cameras ready I got my setting dialed in and you best believe my settings are dialed in because I I've already conceptualized the shot that I want so I'm just waiting for the right person to walk in there or a person to walk the right way maybe i want someone that's pulling a suitcase today maybe i want someone that'll jump over the puddle like these are these are things that you you need to sort of think you know you, you every day you pass this corner like think about times square in new york every time i've ever gone to times square in new york in my earlier days i never came back with anything that i like and i had to come home and write down uh, a shot list of what I want from Times Square. And as do, as I'm doing that shot list, I'm thinking, ah, oh, there's that corner I want. Ah, oh, there's that there's that section where there's a triangle with the with the chairs and the lines in the street. And when I get back to Times Square, patience is the name of the game. I'm going to go through my shot list one by one and I'm gonna stand there and I'm gonna wait. I'm not going to be, the, you know, oh, I got to go home. It's getting like, no, I'm out here for this and I'm waiting. I'm going to snap a few. Sometimes I won't even snap. But the, the, the point here is exercise the patient to get the shot that you know you deserve. And it is the most rewarding thing in the world. These two are, are I guess, comp <laughs> what the hell would you compositional differences. Uh, getting low and looking for reflections. Uh, I think a lot of what I see in street photography, a lot of the greats that people study, there are some themes that I see. And 
two that I, that come up a lot are reflections and getting low. Getting low, I think, is dope because it's it's kind of the same effect as getting high. It's just something that you don't see. Anything that's not eye level becomes instantly more interesting because it's not something that you see every day. And you can walk past the same block 20 years every day for your life. But if you would just put that camera right in the gutter, right in the gutter, and you lay down next to that thing, or you don't have to lay down. Maybe if you've got one of the, I don't know, up-to-date cameras like a mirrorless camera. I'm talking shit to Canon and, uh, and Nikon. And you can remote trigger from your app. Put that camera down there and just wait. It's crazy how different the perspective is a few feet down or a few feet up, which is why it's dope when people get drones and, and the photography looks so much different. I almost said better there, but different. <laughs> uh, and then reflections. Reflections are, reflections are tough, uh, especially if you don't live in an urban setting in a city. Uh, in New York, I have no problems with reflections. I just haven't, it hasn't been on my list yet. I haven't gotten there. Uh, but it's definitely there, and uh, I think reflections add a great deal of interest to the shot, especially if you can get it in such a way where uh, in the reflections are people and subjects. Like, that's super dope. That's super eye-catching to me. So when you're out and about, don't forget to get low. Don't you leave that site until you get low and just get that one more perspective. And then if you can, try to get uh, some reflection in there. I, I think that adds a lot. As always, I need you guys to get down in the comment sections below. I need you to drop some photography, some street photography hints for the homie, or tips and tricks for street photography. I should say, I know a lot of you've got a lot of good things to say. I've seen them in the comments over the years. And just in general, the YouTube community is very strong. And the community here on this channel is very strong. And I know a lot of you shoot street because you tell me all the time. So let's hear it. Let's hear your tips for street photography. My name is Ramon. Don't forget to like the video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. We got plenty more coming. And I'm out of here. Peace. <laughs> well, I guess. And the reason we started Lifestyles to Find is because uh, if we weren't on camera arguing about these things, the technologies, the phones, the iPhones, the Androids, the cameras, the games, we'd be on the phone arguing about it. <laughs> we'd be in each other's houses arguing about it. So why not just put it in front of a camera for everyone to enjoy it the way we do? That's what Lifestyles to Find is all about. We just...